live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Monday, March 14th. I'm Courtney Savala. It feels like a Monday, a good one at that. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Shore. Glad to have you with us. Coming up today on Houston Life, spring break is here. And if you are looking for activities to keep the kids entertained, we've got two easy rodeo-inspired science activities to try with the kids at home and a very special guest in studio for those experiments. Uh, super cute, too, A four-legged guest. That likes cucumbers for mm -hmm. snacks. Mm -hmm. uh, then get ready to shop y'all till you drop. My favorite event, the Nutcracker Market Spring Edition is back. We've got your first look at all the merchants coming to the show. Well, a few of the merchants, not all several hundred of them. That's right. We've got some good <laughs> ones in studio. Plus, as this year's NCAA tournament is about to kick off, find out how Houston is preparing to host the tournament next year. Yeah, the Final Four is going to be here. Very exciting. I filled out my bracket. Did you fill out yours? Working on it. We're doing a neighborhood bracket. I know. We, we need to do an HL bracket and see who comes up on top. Just saying. She will. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just like sometimes how the names sound. Maybe Lauren, Lauren Kelly will. <laughs> She's standing by with a look at what you have coming up. Hey, girl. Uh, I need some help filling out that bracket. Different story, different day. Spring break is here, like you guys said. And from the rodeo to museums, I'm going to share a list of traditional and non-traditional ways you can keep the kids entertained while they are out of school. There are some really good ones on there, you guys. I know you're going to want to hear all about them, but Derek and Courtney, Back to you guys for now. Absolutely. And just a sneak peek, that Frida Kahlo oh. exhibit. We went to it. Fan favorite. Oh, my gosh. Still thinking about it. I want to go back. It is so good for sure. Before we get into today's show, let's get the details on the forecast. Frank is standing by. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. But, you know, spring weather brings spring storms, and that's sure what does. we're looking at. It looks like it's an overnight issue. Let's get to it. You can see outside right now, it's just beautiful. We've had very quiet skies and the temperatures. Look at that. 81 in Sugar Land right now. Mid-70s, 73 on the island, but there's a cold front coming. When that cold air meets that warm air, that can be explosive. So the front will continue into the Dallas area by 9 o'clock tonight. You see the storms ahead of it. We may catch a few of those, but the real show for us doesn't happen until midnight to 2 a.m. in town and then 3, 4 in the morning as it moves off the coast. Behind that, we're quiet. It's going to be really nice as far as the rush hour, but there's a severe weather threat overnight that you need to know about from 12 to 4, especially that yellow area, the northern sections. But all of us, tornadoes, hail, damaging winds, a lot more on all of this, obviously, coming up at 3.30. We'll talk to you then. Oh, my goodness, Frank. So uh, the roller coaster weather story continues. <laughs> it does. It never stops. Okay. Thanks for letting <laughs> us know. We'll see you in just a bit. Well, today, March 14th, is Pi Day. You know Pi? P.I. P.I. Day. So the virtually infinite number we know as 3.14. You know, it's actually not totally infinite. I guess they've discovered there are like 50 trillion numbers They're that come after, after right? the decimal, decimal point. Having flashbacks to math class? Yes, and I'm starting to itch. Same, same. So the <laughs> circumference of a circle equals pi d, like d for diameter, or 2 pi r, radiate. Do you remember? Okay. Anyway, it makes my brain Am hurt I give you a blank stare? Forget <laughs> the complicated math, though. In honor of pie day, there are all kinds of restaurant and bakery deals around town where you can find discounts on freshly baked pies, even half off some pizzas. The deals are good today only. You can find a list of them online at clicktohouston.com. Yummy. Mm. And also the boys ate pizza pie for lunch today. They're on spring break. Oh, so yeah. yeah, good stuff happening. And it was definitely a stellar weekend out at the Houston rodeo. Of course, weather was fantastic all weekend long, but Friday kicked off everything with Bun B and other H-Town hip hop Houston royalty took the stage for Black Heritage Day. More than 70,000 people were there witnessing history as Bun B was the first African-American male Houstonian to headline Rodeo Houston. It was a big party. His friends, Lil Kiki, Paul Wall. It was Paul Wall's birthday. The crowd sang happy birthday to him. It was a stellar event. More on this and also more on the story on clicktohouston.com. I mean, that's an historic night there at the rodeo, and it was so great when Bun B came on Houston Life to announce that second part of his lineup. I know. We love being friends with him. And yesterday, we went out with Family Day out at the Houston uh, rodeo, and it was the best time we had on the grounds. So many people were out. Weather was perfect. Uh oh. Somebody thought it was a really good idea that I ride this ride you with Connor. You rode that? <laughs> yes. What happened? I think the guy in the end might have passed out. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh. I'm just now I think, noticing this. I think you might have passed well, out. Well, my face there is just witnessing this was not a good idea. That whole ride <laughs> does like a 360. And when I got on, Connor loves, he loves carnival rides. When I got on, I told the guys, I said, I'm really sorry. I'm a screamer. So I just like, I scream before we even start moving. It was crazy. Wow. But so fun. Good for you. Okay. I want to, I want to go and check I out. Just uh, noticed the other guy. <laughs> And you. Okay, so did you hear the big news? Tom Brady's announcement? He has changed his mind about retirement and will be returning to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to play his 23rd season of pro football. 44 years yeah. old, seven-time Super Bowl champ. He made the announcement yesterday on Twitter, writing, quote, these past two months I've realized my place is still on the field and not in the stands. And it turns out, I think retirement lasted for him for just 40 days. I, I, that is crazy. I saw it too, and I went, "Did I just flash back? What's happening?" I had to look at the date on that uh, on that tweet because I wasn't sure it was real. Yeah. Apparently, he saw Ronaldo playing soccer, and that kind of is what he said he's started. Like, if he can do it. I can do it too. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he's definitely a goat. Let's he turns in, 45 in August. It's by the crazy. Way. Yeah. I know. Let's bring in Lauren Kelly with our question of the day. Hey, Lauren. I'm just as shocked as you guys. Wow. <laughs> well, we want to hear from you. What is something you couldn't quit if you? You tried and you guys have already got some great comments coming in so far. Bonnie, we are going to start with you lifting weights. It has changed my life in so many amazing ways. Good right. for you, Bonnie. That's wonderful. Terry writes it and says, coloring my hair the gray roots. I will fight the gray <laughs> until my death. Unlike Courtney and I, we just yank them out. <laughs> Sorry. Them out. Sorry. Can't no. help it. All right. And Catherine writes in coffee. Don't even try to fool me with that decaf. No. Decaf. Get out of here. I totally agree with that. I know. I know when it's decaf. You guys head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join the conversation. We will share more of your comments a little bit later on. But Courtney and Derek, what do you think? What is something that you just couldn't quit if you tried? I'm with the I'm with the decaf for sure. If yeah. I order decaf, some I mean I need to be rescued. Same. That's something's <laughs> happening. Isn't there just a little bit of caffeine in decaf? No, no. none. I think no. I think there's a drop of it. Um, I probably can't quit Jan Hargrave because she's one of the oh, most incredible yay. people. And she happens to be here. She happens to be here. So <laughs> that's answer. my answer. Good answer. Good answer. All right, Lauren. Thanks for <laughs> sure. selling me on about the green. Sorry. Me too. They, they just stick up, though. They, just, they can't put they it down. They do. I it's it's out. poor. I know. It's I know. horrible. Anyway, we'll yeah. see you in a bit, Lauren. Okay. Thanks so much. Still to come, your body language. Are you giving off the wrong impression? And in a relationship or even at work? You might be. We're What's bringing with in that the stare? expert to weigh in <laughs> on this debate. Jana Hargrave will join us for our H-Town sit-down when Houston Life returns right after this. Welcome back to Houston Life. It is time now for our H-Town sit-down. Let's meet today's guest. She knows what you're thinking, even if you don't say a word. Body language expert Jan Hargrave has built a career teaching others how to decode the nonverbal cues that are all around us. She's a popular speaker for some of the biggest corporations in the world, has appeared in dozens of magazines and national television shows, and has become a go-to resource for political and legal analysis. Jan is a frequent guest on Houston Life, and she's back today for our H-Town sit down. Jan Hargrave, come on out. Hello, here she is. welcome I'm here. back in person. Thank you, baby. I'm so good to see you. Too. Oh. You are pink. I'm shocked. To me too. I I'm know. Kidding. I'm As kidding. I went through my signature. closet, I thought, what could I not wear that would not be me? But I had to wear pink. It's you my thing. It's, it's your my thing. signature. You did look bring fantastic. some pink glasses. Well, thank you. And it's long time since we've seen each other in person. It's been a minute. Before we get into the topics, okay. tell us, tell our viewers, what have you and your husband Cecil been up we to? Oh, <laughs> everything. We well, you know during COVID, all of my in person person events just kind of canceled. So what I did years ago, I would work with TV anchors down in Louisiana to help them project very well over TV screens, how to look, um, you know, wholesome, how to connect with people, how to look very honest, because I'm sure there's some TV anchors you like more than others. And it's be probably because you trust them and you like their body language. So even the position of your shoulders, your head, and what you do with your hands, because you have to show your hands every now and then during these virtual calls. So I changed my topic to be effective nonverbal communication during virtual conversations. So 
they wow. kind of went crazy. And then yeah. I told my clients, look, I said, I'll give you the, my special pandemic pricing and cut my price in half. So people are calling me. So it was fun because I could do it from home. And I'm still doing it from home now, training a big group in Israel. I'm training salespeople. There's two years now that I'm training a sales group in Israel because everything now is on virtual yeah. screen. So yeah. they, I can see you put your body up when I look at you because I'm sure that you're aware that I'm watching your right. body language. Right, every time. And I, I don't know if I should do I. Yes. What do, well, this what do is I perfect do? for our first topic. <laughs> what so do I do? What Yale do I University, they, they did yeah. this extensive research study and experiment. It was a controlled experiment, essentially showing that our body language is just as important as the words that come out mm -hmm. of our mouth. And sometimes Correct. people unintentionally, they say one thing using their words, but their body says something else. How common is that? Correct. Chance? So it's incongruence. So when, when, when there is incongruence, you don't come across as believable and you don't come across as, as uh, I guess, like. So and, and as sincere. So someone who would have a smiling face but angry eyes, that's incongruency. So when you have, in, someone says, I like you so much and they're just sitting there with their arms this way. So then you don't come across as believable. So when your body language is very congruent with the words that are coming out of your mouth, like someone would be, I want you to come on my team and their hand is bringing you towards them. See, that's congruence. So when you have incongruence, you're not trusted as often as someone who would. And this is so fascinating to me and also important because you've even studied this on, let's say, even like a jury panel. How important right, that right, is. Right, right, yes. I did a big case, in fact, two weeks ago in uh, Wild. Texas really an interesting that's where I can see that everything I ever studied just kind of seeps in and it goes because if I'm looking at one person testify I can put all my energies in, into that person when I'm speaking in front of an audience and you know, I'm worried about the audience and my content but when I can just really zero in on someone that's when it's interesting more interesting to me and, and you know bodies don't know how to lie mm -hmm. your body will always give you away so you know don't think that they, it does you will do some gesture we call it leakage and there are certain gestures that people do when they're being deceptive. There are certain gestures that people do and they're honest. So, you know, people just naturally will move their hands a certain way when they're nervous. A lot of people do what we call displacement gestures. Displacement gestures are gestures that are done that are not necessary gestures. Like someone who keeps fixing their clothing. Right. Someone pulling pieces of imaginary lint off of their clothing. Someone maybe scratching here when you know it doesn't itch here or someone scratching a hand here. That's a displacement gesture. So the more displacement gestures a person does when he talking, the less likely you will think that he's he's confident or sincere. Or maybe telling the truth. Very Or maybe telling the truth. Or someone who does this. I was watching, oh, I was watching someone this morning doing this. So it's kind of a complicated life for me because, you know, I like to enjoy my friends. But right. that while I'm enjoying them, I'm thinking, okay, he just moved his hand a certain way. So what's he thinking now? <laughs> yeah, you can't turn it's it off. True. It's true. Or to be married to me. Can you imagine being married to me? Have dinner with Jan Hargrave and it's an experience. Okay, let's talk about how technology plays a role in this because okay. Google has a department I want to read this it's right. their advanced technology and products lab so essentially what Google is trying to do is to help the technology around us sort of interact with us and we interact with it a little better so for instance when looking down at your cell phone not natural hunching over your computer desk all day at a screen not natural so maybe they they could teach the computer to recognize when you look away from the screen maybe it pauses the video or maybe your technology is integrated I'll like into you. your into your clothing or into your wearables mm -hmm. so that our bodies are interacting and yeah. and the computers are reading our body language as if they were another person right. you might be out of a job Jan oh I don't I'm kidding no, I'm, I'm kidding. kidding hey but you know what when you said that it's kind of frightening to me because we we lose this human touch so much I mean we have kids who are on these phones all the time and yeah. rarely you know even at dinners or when they're you know with their parents so we're losing some of that human touch and we need it because nothing will replace that we can get machines that can, can send rockets to the moon but you cannot replace this human touch people like to be touched even sometimes and interacting with and I think the same article said that that people usually look at their phones between 99 and 360 times a day. So I thought, wow, that's live. But Derek, it reminded me of at, at the Houston airports, we have TSA and I work with TSA. So we have officers that are called BDOs, behavior detection officers. They're in plain clothes and they just walk around near the airport. So when we're working together, what we're looking for in all of these faces, we're looking for the face that doesn't match the other faces in the crowd. No way. And that's the one, you know, we're gonna kind of probably pull away so that's why I don't know how well these 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 mechanical things will work because still the human eye is probably the best thing because your eyes can do the only 
element you have about yourself that can do two things. We can take in information with our eyes and we can give out information with our eyes. So, you know, I can see what you're doing, but yet I can tell you if I'm happy or I'm sad. Right. Okay, yeah. Jan Hargrave. Oh I'm so <laughs> sad. We got to leave it there. I want to hear more about this airport thing. So come back and see us soon. So when you're going through the airport, think I'm watching you. Don't look Jerry. guilty. Don't look guilty. <laughs> okay. Don't rub on your chest. Just keep on walking. Don't All right, Jan Hargrave, there. thank you so much. You're welcome. That was a lot of fun. You're welcome. Thank you so much, too. When we come back, a preview of some of the great items you can find at this year's Nutcracker Market Spring. I'm excited. And later, we're heading to the court to see what the city has already in store for next year's NCAA tournament. That and more when Houston Life returns. Well, welcome back. You know, we just sprung forward right on the clocks. That means the calendar says spring is right around the corner. And you know what that means? It's almost time for one of my favorite events of the year, the Houston Ballet Nutcracker Market for spring. Joining us now to share what we can expect at this year's fantastic event is Nutcracker Market CEO and my friend, Patsy Chapman. Welcome back to the show. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. So the spring Nutcracker Market started for the very first time 2019, right? Yes. And we did this because you y'all were getting some questions like we need a, we need another one we do so we thought about it for a long time about 10 years and then I finally felt like I had the staff that could help me pull it off so we did our first uh, spring market in 2019 and it was great it was great I was there for it what I love about spring and if if the regular market get you nervous because it's very large and everything this is the one for you because it is a smaller scale explain that for the people it is it's about half the size so we have about 160 merchants for the spring show we'll have close to 300 for the fall show we'll have a little little over a hundred thousand people in november we'll have maybe twenty thousand for spring okay. so it's very manageable it is very manageable it's spread out it's lovely listen we want everybody to mark their calendars now because we're going to bring up the market details um it's happening there's not like a preview event but it's happening Friday uh, April 8th and you see the dates and the times there rolls until Sunday April 10th and anything specific about tickets or anything else that you want to let people know about right now so tickets are available now at ticketmaster.com or you can purchase them at the market ticket windows okay get your tickets now make your plan but let's talk about some of the things that we can see you're featuring some of the new items here I wish you guys could smell this leather because the whole studio smells so good let's talk about this one. Oh. I think we're going wreaths first. Okay. I'm sorry. Sure. You can have a wreath on your door all year long. I do all the time. This is Wreaths by Mary. She's a longtime uh, merchant with us. She has hundreds of different styles um, from sports themes to holiday, every holiday you can think of. And of course, this is a great celebration for the 4th of July. And Wreaths by Mary has a cult following all across the city. She does lovely pieces. Okay, we're going to get to this one here, which is Hide and Chic, and this is the brand new merchant this year. It is. Isn't that a great name? It so is. Cute. So it's all about the hide, the leathers, and then she has just tons of handbags in a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. I'm just going to show you this one because this pink is absolutely adorable. I think Jan Hardgrave was. Ah, she needs that bag. This one. It's so beautiful, and uh, the details on these bags and leathers, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then a crowd favorite, of course, during rodeo, actually all season long, is Houston's own Christina Green. She's awesome. She's been with us a long time. She has the most beautiful jewelry for any occasion, from small and dainty to a statement piece. She's awesome. And what is so great, too, I mean, she does, she has price ranges across the board, is you can really find anything for your entire shopping list, whatever it may be, and even the young ones, because isn't this, uh, th these are some really cute baby clothes, right? Yes, this is called Hot Baby, and for you and I who only had boys <laughs> we didn't get to buy all these darling little girl things they're but so they're just sweet. adorable with little matching hats and matching blankets and you can just get the whole look going there it is so so cute um, okay this chocolate nutcracker, what's mm -hmm. happening here? This looks amazing. So this is the chocolate bar. Many of you in Houston might be familiar with them. They've been around for a long yeah. time. They sell a variety of chocolates, chocolate ice cream, chocolate cake, if you ever want to stop in uh, late after dinner and have the biggest piece of chocolate cake you might have. But um, so yeah, she made this cute nutcracker for us today. 
It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, and I think now we're moving over to B. Miley Designs, which is the ceramic pieces mm -hmm. in the front. Mm -hmm. So she just has some fun little pieces for spring. That's the uh, the fun part about the spring market. We're before Easter this year, so you'll see a lot of Easter items at the spring show. Sometimes it falls after Easter. This year we're before, so lots of fun bunnies and colorful Easter items. And we have about 30 seconds left, and I think Tin Roof is this beautiful little display, lovely um, set here on the side. Yeah. Great little tasting, whiskey tasting. A good guest probably would have brought you a good shot of tequila or something. Um, and then he makes the most beautiful charcuterie boards, cutting boards. They really are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then what do we have here on the rack? So this is a unique boutique and she uh, has ladies apparel. And what's great about her and many of our booths at the show is they have anything from small to XXL. So lots of plus sizes, every everything in between. Yeah, so size great. inclusive, yep. which is very, very important as well. Well, we're super excited excited to have the spring market back. We can't wait to see you. I will be out there, of course, and I know you're busy. You know it, girl. I wouldn't miss it. For more information, you can visit nutcrackermarket.com or simply give them a call at 713-535-3231. Thanks so much, Thanks, Patsy. Courtney. Lovely to see you. Now we're going to send things over to Derek, who's talking about another big event coming to town. Yeah, thanks, Courtney. The NCAA men's tournament kicks off this Thursday, but Houston is already looking ahead to hosting next year's Final Four. Joe Sam is giving us a breakdown of of what the committee has planned for 2023. Hey, Joe. Hey, Derek, that's absolutely right. So we're at MD Anderson YMCA. You can already see all the action going on behind of us. We're going to be telling you why we're exactly here because it has some significance to the NCAA. But to talk about the planning that's happening for 2023, we have the president here with us of the planning committee, as well as Ms. Marie with the YMCA of Greater Houston. We're going to start with you, Holly, to tell us more about what you guys already have in store for 2023. You guys are already ahead of the game. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we're well into the planning process already, but it's because of all the fun community community initiatives we've got coming up, including cool things like YMCA restoration that happened in 2011 that Marie can share with you about. That's going to be absolutely incredible, and we already see how amazing this is for the kids. Talk about some of the renovations that have been made here from the 2011 project. Yeah, I love it when we talk about a legacy gift because it truly is, and I've seen decades go past now, and some of the people playing here, the young adults playing, were actually players during that time frame of 2011. They got to see this court get renovated. It actually helped us double and triple our membership revenue. We were able to draw more kids and families in because of the upgrades. This is a beautiful community full of rich families that love to come together. And the renovations allowed us to continue to have them a place to come with pride. And they restored hope in people believing in this community. Absolutely. We already are looking at right now some of the events that were happening around town, like the NCAA breakfast that happened in 2011. But what are some of the other events that we may be seeing in 2023 really quickly? We've got Fan Fest presented by Capital One, which will happen downtown, the Dribble presented by Buick and a lot of other fun community things that whether you have a game ticket or not, everybody in your family can come out and participate in 2023. We are looking forward to that. You already know that I'm excited about it as well. When we come back, we're going to be talking to some of the kids here getting it down on the court right now. And don't go anywhere, Holly Marie. We're going to be talking to you some more about the NCAA and what they're doing here with the YMCA as well. For right now, we're going to send things back to you guys in the studio. A lot of fun happening. They're getting it hot here on the court, Courtney and Derek. Yeah, warm it up, Joe. Shoot some hoops. We'll see you in just a bit. Still to come, Lauren Kelly has some ways to keep the kids entertained while they're out of school for spring break. Hi, Lauren. And you guys, there are so many different things around town. This list that I've got for spring break is a ton of activities to help keep the fan entertained. But we're talking a list of traditional and non-traditional things, including crocodiles. You see that? To do for spring break this year. Plus, we'll get a check of what's coming up for the news at 4, including some breaking Kardashian news. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday at just about 3.30. Let's get more of your responses to our question of the day. Earlier we asked, what is something you couldn't quit if you tried? Gloria writes in, trying to get my big family together. Gloria, I feel it's like herding cats, getting everyone together in the same, same place, schedule. same time. I know. Jody writes in, ice cream, and I'm talking about the good stuff. If it was illegal, I'd be buying it on the black <laughs> market. Hey, when you want it, you want it. Yeah, go for the small containers. That mac and cheese ice cream you brought in was so good, Courtney. <laughs> Elizabeth writes in, telling the truth. Don't ask me if you don't want an honest answer. Oh, that's really good. Life is too short. Absolutely. Anything to add? I don't know. I got to think about that. Yeah? Yeah, how about you? Probably online shopping sometimes, like the Amazon mm. thing. 
Yeah. I wish I could quit it, but I don't know. You could always throw away your phone. I, I could do that. You could. Let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank. <laughs> There's no way. Together. They're all yeah. laughing. There's she no can't way. do that. Yeah, just, just toss it. I mean, all those yeah. photos and, at, you know, the apps and stuff that you help with. Connect the world. Yeah. Cut yeah. The, cut the yeah. cord, Courtney. Come on. I know. I know. I'm going to be a better mom, I promise. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, there's no judgment here at all. You're a great mom. Oh. You know what? I could not quit petting every single puppy that I see in a park. You know what? Oh. That is true. You know, right. I'm like, yeah. oh, my gosh. It's like it's like literally instant love at first sight. Yeah. yeah. I can't. Yeah. I try, but, you know. I love puppies, but for me, I couldn't give up sunflower seeds. I just, yeah. <laughs> Especially, what? yeah, you I like love me some sunflower seeds. seeds. I've never, oh my I, gosh. in the three and a half years I've known you, I've never yeah. seen you eat a sunflower uh, seed. Yeah, so I, I normally eat them on road trips because that's what helps keep me awake, that and, like, you know, but vanilla Pepsi soda. But, um. Anyway, I think I'm telling. But <laughs> sunflower seeds, I like them a lot. Soda. Okay. Yes. Okay. I know. Yeah, I know. I, I don't. I, I don't drink that much. So I don't drink soda that much, except on road trips. It helps okay. keep me. It's, it's my coffee. Sunflower okay. seeds <laughs> and, pe and soda. That's my coffee to stay awake on. You know, eight-hour drive. We love you, Keith. If somebody told me I had to give up barbecue sauce, I would cry. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> barbecue I would be sauce. Like, what? Yeah. I was kind of raised on barbecue sauce, to be honest. So. They put it. It, it, it was in your bottle. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put him to sleep. It might have been. Yep. It was good. Oh. Still is. When you know you're raised in the South. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's it. All that goes with it. So anyway. Uh -huh. Yeah, hey, Frank, we don't want to give up the sunshine today. I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, I've got changes, and they're important ones to talk about. So let's get to it. We'll talk first about what we have, and it is beautiful out there. Temperatures at 81 in Sugarland, 76 at uh, Bush, 75 at Hobby. So if you're headed out to the carnival, it's right in the 70s. I was there yesterday. It was terrific weather. Saw Dirks Bentley. He brought his daughter on stage at the end. She has some pipes, let me tell you. Oh, she's terrific. Now, tonight, Sam Hunt, who, of course, is terrific. There are rain chances during the uh, concert from 6 to 10, but the big show is this front. When it gets here around 11 o'clock tonight, that's when we will watch for those bigger storms to move in. So you see that pushing across. I'll put a pause point there at 2. I'm going to go close in in a second. And then it continues to move pretty quickly. So this is not a, a morning commute issue. It is literally an overnight issue with a severe weather threat being tornadoes, hail, and damaging winds. Uh, it's moving too fast to have a flood problem, but we could see some severe weather 12 to 4 a.m. So here's the close up. There are those scattered showers at 7 p.m. So it's very widely scattered there, 7, 8, 9 o'clock. But you'll notice by 10, we have those bigger storms moving right across uh, part, parts of Waller County there. It looks like Prairie View then to Conroe at midnight. And then we continue to see this whole front slide across from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. right along the coast and moves out of here once we get to four. So it's really that 12 to four that we're going to have to watch for. Other than that, it's going to be a really nice Tuesday, a little cooler, 72, but we start warming up uh, back up on Wednesday. Thursday looks good. There's an evening shower. We'll talk about all of it coming up at four. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good, Frank. Thank you, all sir. Right. All right. Here's a look at some of the other stores we're working on for KPRC 2 News at 4 o'clock today. Yeah, as gas prices continue to soar across the country, so are reports of gas thefts. Thieves are targeting gas stations and unattended vehicles this afternoon. Experts are sharing what you can do to protect yourself. Plus, if you test positive for COVID-19, you can now get free antiviral medications on the spot to help treat it. We do have the details on where exactly that medication is available. Then they made it official after four months of dating. Kim Kardashian and SNL's Pete Davidson announced that they are a couple. The world is right now. Uh, what we're we gonna call them, Kim Pete? Kim Pete? What's gonna be their oh. name? I mean, you know, they've. Uh, Hollywood, they, you know, you got to give a couple yeah. a name, right? I mean, so. Got to be a mashup. KP, yeah. Kim Pete, Kim hmm. Pete, uh, I don't know. Kardashian son. <laughs> I like that one, actually, Frank. <laughs> oh, Franklin. Well, that is the most shocking breaking news I've heard in a long time. I mean, time. seriously, Kim we didn't Pete see that dating? coming. What? Yeah, I know. Like, wow. wow. When did that happen? Yeah. Someone tell Kanye. I, I guess our head's been Oof. under a rock or something. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> All right. Can't it's wait just to hear. IG official, I guess, is well, maybe they that's changed the only their way status. I know it's official, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Who are they again? I'm okay. sorry. I'm just kidding. We'll see you guys at the top okay, of the hour. Good. All right. Stay with the sunflower seeds. If you're looking for a fun and unique way to make the most out of spring break this year, there's tons of local activities for everyone. Grab the pen and paper. Oh, Houston is like a gold mine of activities, right? Lauren Kelly is standing by with all kinds of fun around town you can enjoy while the kids are out of school. Hey, Lauren. Hey, guys. Now, we've already mentioned, you know, the rodeo, of course, but from animals to beaches to museums and even a brick.
breakfast on a chuck wagon, Houston has so many fun family activities for spring break. And I've got a list of traditional and non-traditional ways that the whole family can stay busy while the kids are out of school. I'm going to run down these. Let's start with the Houston Zoo. They've got fun for the entire family, including more than 10 animal encounter options. I was there last week. You can explore their newest exhibit, the South America's Pantanal, and see the Asian elephant herd with both baby elephants. And you can wish the baby Winnie a happy birthday. So cute. You can get up close with the giraffes and feed them daily at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., which they eat, by the way, lettuce, full pieces of romaine lettuce. You can also check out the goat yard, which now has reopened for the public. That's for the first time since 2019, so pre-pandemic. Book your tickets at HoustonZoo.org. Now, moving on, the same people behind the popular exhibit for the immersive Van Gogh exhibit are back with a new way to immerse yourself in the art and life of Frida Kahlo. It is located right across from City Center. It's not far at all. Guests can expect to see 500,000 square feet of art, 90 million pixels, and 1.2 million frames of video. This is truly the story of how she turned her life into art. And you can find out more info at immersive-frida.com. You literally sit inside of her art. It's amazing. All right, Moody Gardens is the ideal spot for a fun spring break family vacation, especially since it's so close. Here's what is new. The Sea Lions 3D, Wings Over Water 3D, Mowgli in the 4D Special FX Theater, and the Dinos Alive exhibit. That is so much fun. You can also choose from spring break adventures programs like Whimsical World of Water, Investigating Insects to Treetops in the Tropics, and so much more. Let's not forget about those penguins, you guys, but there's also some great golf and spa packages at the Moody Gardens Hotel. All that info is at moodygardens.org. And if you've ever wanted to see some of the rarest crocodiles in the country up close and personal, well, Crocodile Encounter in Angleton is the crocodile capital of Texas, and it's one of Houston's best kept secrets. It's just 30 minutes from downtown, and the Crocodile Encounter is a great spot for the family to check out for spring break. There's a ton of wild animals there to see, and it's safe. Don't worry. You can learn all about them. Of course, the crocodiles are the main attraction. You can watch them get fed, learn about their daily routines, and even try feeding one yourself from behind the bars. No worries. Again, it's very safe. More info, Crocodile Encounter. Com. And now on display, I cannot wait to check this out. It's at the Holocaust Museum, Houston. The notorious RBG, the life and times of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's a trailblazer whose life's works involve fighting for women's rights. And the exhibition brings key moments to life, including parts of her Supreme Court wardrobe, like her robe, multiple listening stations, and of course, portraits of RGB and Sandra Day O'Connor, the first two women to serve on the Supreme Court. Holocaust Museum is the only Texas location to host this exploration of the life of this cultural icon, and it's on view through July 31st. More info is at hmh.org slash rbg. Now, I know you guys probably didn't write the entire list down, but I've got a full list. It's going to be super simple at houstonlife.tv, and there's also a place that you can get in on a little chuck wagon breakfast, and that is online. You definitely want to check out and bring the little kiddos to. Like, Sounds like fun. It's, it's not part of the rodeo. So if you jump online and find out where that one's at, I've got a full list of a laundry list of things that you might not realize are even just a couple minutes away. That was such a great list, Lauren. Really something for everyone. And I love that there's so many free activities here yes. in Houston. The Manil Collection, the museum, is always totally free to the public. And, of course, Discovery Green downtown. You can yep. walk around the pond. There's a lot to do without spending a dime as well. Also, the Houston Botanic Gardens, magnificent. Yeah. I love that place. There's literally so much. Buffalo do. Bayou, too. Yes. You know, get your steps yes. in. Yes. Lauren, awesome list. Thanks so much. Thanks for Something for everybody. All right, let's check in with Joe Sam, who's hanging out on the basketball court today. Hey, Joe. Hey guys, that's right. So we're talking about the final four preparations for 2023. They are already underway. When we come back, we're going to be also spotlighting Women's History Month and what's happening here with the students, some of the female students that are out here and also working with the YMCA. That's when Houston Life returns.
Welcome back here to Houston Life. We're talking about the preparations that are already taking place for the Final Four 2023, which is going to be hosted here in Houston. We want to also spotlight Women's History Month, which is why I have some amazing women with me right now. Holly, again, here with the planning committee, president of the planning committee here. And you already have been involved in this sport so much. You also have a degree in sports degree as well from a lot of different things and accomplishments that you've made within your life. How important is it for females to be in this sport and to be showcasing their skills and their love and their passion for it? It's extremely important and so many women went before us to set this path and create this opportunity for us and so now it's just an honor to be that next group and to be able to set the path for future women leaders. It's really important to have representation in front of you. And we really do have some future leaders here with us right now too. You guys actually work with the YMCA. You started out here practicing playing and then you went on to play ball as well and now you're here helping others as well talk about what do you love so much about basketball and why is it important to be here at the ymca giving back well what i love about the sport i mean it's competitive um it's a physical contact it uh, taught me a lot of life lessons as well it's important because i started out at the ymca and as a female athlete being able to be a sports director now so that i could relate to the female basketball players and give that support really means a lot to me absolutely really really incredible and then the same question from you i'm going to come over here so we can get the full gif of it all. So go ahead and tell me, what it, what is it for you? What does it do for you? Um, it just clears my head. It's definitely like a sanctuary playing on the basketball court. I'm really passionate about it. And, you know, I just love the sport. I love the competitive, uh, competitiveness. And I love that, you know, I can, you know, be myself on the court and allow others to, you know, see my personality and, you know, see my passion. Um, and as for, you know, being brought up in the Y, I think it was just really amazing that I had all that support coming through the Y. And so I just want to be able to give back and, um, you know, give that to women coming up and wanting to be competitive and wanting to have that drive in sports. And you guys are doing an amazing job at that. So we're not going to keep them too long. We're going to let them get back on the court and continue playing. Holly, you guys are doing some amazing work already with the 2023 preparations for the Final Four that's going to be hosted here in Houston. A lot already going on. We're, we're going to keep in touch with Holland because we have to know all the ins and outs whenever it happens. Paul just almost got hit by a basketball, Courtney and Derek. That means that we have to go. <laughs> okay, well, I want to see some one-on-one -on -one or something, Joe. Come yeah. on. Make the most of it. I tried. Yeah. I tried between the break and I could not do it. I don't want to embarrass myself anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. We're excited for next year for sure. We're excited for this year's tournament Yeah, it's a well. big deal. Yeah, it certainly is. All right, coming up on Houston Life, find out what happens when we mix science and the rodeo. We've got two STEM activities and a very special four-legged guest in studio to help us all kick the boredom to the curb this spring break. Cuteness overload. Oh my gosh, up. you won't believe what's about to happen. And as we go to break, Houston Life has teamed up with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation's Women of Distinction event to showcase women in our community who give back. Today we are honoring Mandy Ko. Mandy has dedicated her time to helping as many women and children as she can by creating after-school programs, family-friendly activities, and promoting education. You can scan the QR code on your screen if you'd like to learn more about Mandy. And you can learn more about the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and their Women of Distinction 2022 by visiting Crohn'sColitisFoundation.org. And stay tuned as we continue to honor these women all month long. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Spring break is here, and if you're looking for ways to keep your kids entertained at home, our next guest has two great science experiments that can be done at home. STEM educator and YouTuber of Mommy and Me, the Listers, Crystal Lister, is here to show us how it's all done. Crystal, welcome to Houston Life. You also have a special guest today. It was uh, very noisy, always. This is PJ the pig, and tell us about PJ. This is uh, a new addition to your family? Yes, so PJ, okay, okay, okay. PJ is a pot belly pig. I have to talk to you from down here because okay. he likes his belly rubbed. Um, he is super temperamental like my other co-stars, but um, he is a pot belly pig. He's about four months old, and his favorite thing to eat are cucumbers. Oh, my gosh. He loves to eat cucumbers. I like, I like cucumbers, too. PJ. And in the Mommy and Me uh, YouTube series, you also have some other... Oh, 
okay, okay. very okay. special helpers. Uh, your your daughters. Yes, Chrissy and Kinsley help us with everything. They lead our STEM experiments. Pork Chop will be helping us today, as we know, the month of March, the rodeo. We love um, going to the rodeo, experiencing the games as well as the carnival. And you see Chrissy and Kinsley right there with Pork Chop as we do our experiments. They are adorable, and the YouTube series is so much fun. We're glad you brought PJ into studio. Let's get so into loud. the first experiment. So the first experiment happens. is our room. Okay, 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 this way. Okay, this way, this way. Okay, this way. It's our room, Goldberg. Our okay, okay, okay. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He lost some hands there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. PJ's having a little moment, but don't worry. He's work. having a moment. We're going to try to get things under control here. <laughs> So, Crystal, this first experiment is inspired by, of course, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And hopefully we can get PJ. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, let's see. Let's see if, let's see if he'll start let's it for us. Let's see what we can do. Let's okay. see if he'll start let's it for us. Step out of the way. Hold on. Let's make sure we get... Oh. Okay. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay, so tell us about we just what we just witnessed there, Crystal. So this was my temperamental co-star. It's a Rube Goldberg or a chain reaction. So Pork Chop started the books, where the books hit the lever, if you will, with a back scratcher, and it set off our dominoes that were up the ramp, right by the cowgirl boots that Chrissy had to put in there. And then it slid down the ramp, hitting the car, and popping the balloon to give Pork Chop even more food. I see. Well, Pork Chop seems to have liked this because he's yes. calmed down a bit. On the chain reaction, this is something that the kids can do at home, finding household items. I love that here you've used like a paper towel uh, holder that you, or you know, the spool that you've yes. cut in half, the water bottles. So this is something that kids could set up home, but patience, you gotta pack your patience to do yes. this. Yes, you will see more failures than successes, but like you saw on air, it actually worked. And so Pork Chop, is, PJ is happy now. You see he's, he's a happy, happy Maybe boy. he was hangry. Oh, maybe he was. Don't worry, I know what that feels like, PJ. All right, what do we have here? So the next thing that we absolutely love about the carnival at the rodeo are carnival games, but it can be sometimes a little tricky to win. So here we have, we're harnessing the power of air. And you can't oh. always see how strong air is, but you can feel it. So today, we are setting up a carnival game that we can win. Okay, let's do it. I see the right. safety glasses here. Yes. And you also have brought this little uh, smoke machine. Yes, we're using our our fog machine so that we'll be able to see it because we can't always see the power of air. Okay. So this is just a, uh, a regular rubber trash can that you have. Yes. And we're, we're gonna fill it up with some fog juice here. Okay. And then you only have, it's rodeo inspired, so you have three shots. Turn it around. Okay. To knock, get it back a little bit. Okay. Now hit it on the other side like a drum. On the back? Right okay, here. ready? Right here like a drum. Okay. Yes. Go. Whoa! Wow. One shot. Let's see if you can clear the table. Whoa! Can you do it in three? Oh, oh just about there. Almost. Wow. Let's try this one. Okay. Another can. Let's see how. Do you want to try it? Yeah, let me try. Okay, here. I'll hold it. I, hit the, it like I like drum. that setup. Let's see. All Whoa. right. I wonder if I can clear. Oh, you did it. I did it. Amazing. Good job. <laughs> yes. What's your prize? Um, more cucumbers for pork chop. There you go. How about that? Listen, that was a lot of fun. Really yes. interesting. Let's talk a little bit more about your YouTube series oh, yes. and the types of projects that you post on there with, uh, with your daughters because this is all STEM based. Yes. So they're fun for the kids, but the young people are also learning something while they do it. Yeah, so they're learning a lot. So Chrissy and Kinsley lead STEM projects, if you will, and we go through using our resources that we have. So in-home things that you can do, but that others may not have access access to. So we like to, I guess, reach one and teach one is our charge. And so we love it. Um, we also doing it with the one, one year old and the two year old. So just think if they can do it, you can as well. And we walk through step by step with all the materials listed so they can join in with us. Very so nice. mommy and me, the listers, we're teaching the masses. Mommy and me, the listers, Crystal Lister. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for having and us. And give uh, PJ some belly rubs for us. I think Don't he's finally, forget. okay. <laughs> okay. For a link to Crystal's YouTube channel, you 
You can visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. Let's send things on over to Miss Courtney Zavala now. Hey, Courtney. Great job. We always love when they're here, and I will tell you, PJ found some other cucumbers, so he is all set. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a local pilot who's inspiring women to reach for the skies. But first, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hi, Nichelle. Courtney, tune in to ET tonight for everything you didn't see at the Critics' Choice Awards. We're with Will Smith after his big win, plus Billy Crystal on his Lifetime Achievement Award. All the fashion, the red carpet couples, and breaking TV and movie news. We've got it all tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, it's College Basketball 101. We're breaking down some of the terms, plays, and basics of the NCAA tournament so you can be part of all the playoffs fun. And impress everyone. And we're heading to the sky with a 25-year-old female pilot educating other women about the flight and aviation industry. Oh, well, that was a lot of fun today on Houston Life. You're trying to lure Pork Chop up here. It's not working now, but it's he's... It's Pork Chop Jr. We call him PJ. PJ. Not to freak him out. PJ, it's okay, buddy. I I mean, he is the cutest thing. He's still roaming around Studio B, so we're going to go feed PJ. In the meantime, we're <laughs> going to send it on over to Keith and Christine in Studio A. You know, I can identify with pork chop. You know, when you're hungry and you just want a snack, you just kind of get loud about it. Yeah. You know? That's and right. You, you don't always want to eat in front of everybody, too, you know? <laughs> you know, hey, That's we'll true. try. That's we love pork chop, and it's great to see you guys. You too. <laughs>